Hey, in time. Watchman, part two. Is God anti-gun? Is God anti-gun? Now, uh, let me say this real quick, and uh, I say this in all humbleness. Uh, you know, I don't apologize that I'm wearing uh, my hat, and I don't apologize that I've got on a Carhartt shirt and a pistol on my side, and I don't apologize that I'm wearing a beard and I ain't clean shaven and, and, and I don't have a three-piece suit on. I don't apologize for that at all because you can't show it to me in the Word of God, but yet y'all do it. Y'all traditionalist Christians do it every Sunday. In other words, your outer garments are clean and spotless, but your inner parts is like a whitewashed sepulcher. You see? And you know I'm talking to. I'm not talking to everybody. But you, you, you appear in the marketplaces and you shake the hands of people and say you're this on one hand, but yet when it comes to, to believing and st stating the word of God, you won't do it, you see. But in any event, let's, let's don't get on that. Let's get back to this. See, the Bible teaches there will be no peace on the earth until the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, returns to put down all unrighteousness. Isaiah 9 and 6, along with Revelation 19, 11 through 16. You see? Wait a minute, wait a minute now. Do you suppose the Lord Jesus Christ, being God, knew what was going to happen after his crucifixion and resurrection? Of course he did. Of course he knew it. And he warned the disciples. He warned all the disciples. And 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 2,000 years later or thereabout, I can sit there and I can read it, the very warnings that he gave right before he was crucified. And then, and, and then when he come back uh, and God raised him from the dead and, and he was seen by many, he gave more warnings. And today, I can still open my Bible and read that warning because the, the Word of God will stand true. You see? But let's move on. Did he warn them? John 15 and verse 20. The servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. John 16 and 33. In this world you have tribulation. Be of good cheer. He's already overcome the world. What does that mean? Okay. Uh, now back in the book of Isaiah, uh, the Bible says a child's been born to us, son has been given, uh, uh, and and uh, for 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 uh, uh, lack of time, it also says in there that the government shall rest upon his shoulders. So if you think that the government is resting upon his shoulders right now, then you're calling Jesus a murderer and an abortionist and a and a. a all those uh, uh, ungodly things that God is against. So that's what you're calling him, see? Do you see what I'm saying? And you know who I'm talking to. And I'm making this plain, and I'm making it final, you see? I mean, the government don't rest upon his shoulders. Romans 13 misinterpreted, my friend. But it's your interpretation and your tradition, and that's fine. But see, there's a God, that's, that's the ultimate lawgiver, that I answer to, and that you're going to answer to one day, and regardless of what you think's right, by tradition, don't make it right. But let's move on. Did Jesus teach anything about defending oneself or property? And please hear this. Hear me clear. Let the scripture speak for itself and hear me clearly. Mark chapter 3 verse 27. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man, then he can spoil his house. Did you hear me? Luke eleven twenty one. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. Luke, I'm going to read this again. Okay, all of you out there. Luke eleven twenty one, when a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. Okay, now you may, and these people know who I'm talking to. Y'all subscribers just enjoy the ride. Maybe you'll get something out of it. I don't know. Now, you can't dispute what the words of God is, and be right. You can dispute them, but then you're wrong. You see? I understand, love you, and me pray for those who spitefully use you. Yes, sir, buddy, I understand all that, and I do that. But I'm telling you right now, when it comes time, 
You think God's going to give you a throne to sit on because because you, you didn't have a gun to protect your family? You are some kind of twisted individual, if you think that way. You're really twisted. And you need to get some mental help. But let's move on. Luke twenty two thirty six. I've quoted in the video, video after video. But obviously these people don't have ears to hear. Some of them. Just prior to the crucifixion of Jesus. If a man ain't got a sword, let him sell his cloak and buy one. And they said, Lord, here are two swords. He said, it's enough. Now, Jesus didn't have one thing against swords. Because he knew of the evil that exists. You see, you can't. You got to understand something. God's not anti-gun. Because just as there is a spiritual evil, and I understand the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God and put it down to strongholds. But I also understand this. Every day of my life, multiple times a day, God protect my children, my wife, and me, cover this land that we're on and this house that we're in and every door and every window, covered in the blood of Jesus, and I draw a bloodline by faith around this house that no evil spirit can come across or come in and no evil person can come across or touch. Do you see what I'm saying? So I believe and understand the spiritual side of it. And I know that that is the most important part of it. But you cannot, <clears throat> you cannot do away with the fact that there is a physical evil on this earth. And that we must be ready to defend against that physical evil. Because the demon spirits dwell in human beings. Traditional Christian, let me quote it to you. When an unclean spirit has gone out of a man walking through dry places and it finds no rest, guess what it does? It comes back to that house that's swept and clean, which is talking about the human body. And it enters again, and, and guess what? And it brings uh, uh, seven more with it. It's the state of that person's worse off than it was before. Jesus cast the... Uh, Legion of demons out of the man that was of Gadara. The demons asked the Lord Jesus, could they go into swine? And Jesus said, go. That's the first recorded case of devil ham and suicide when they jumped off the cliff. Oh, come on. Some of you got to laugh on that one. Yep. First recorded case of devil ham. When them devils went out of that man, Jesus allowed them to go into the pigs. Then the pigs, hey, then the pigs were by the devil's powers. The pigs were caused to jump off the cliff and commit suicide. You got to have a little laughter with everything, my friend. So I hope you enjoyed that one, you see. So I understand the spiritual side of it. I'm, I'm in the near future. Going to do videos on our demons real, on the spiritual weapons that we must have to go along with the physical weapons. I'm going to do on guerrilla warfare, God permitting. I've got several things, but I'm studying and I'm working so that I make my case solid as a rock. So let's finish this up on the next video. Or two is God anti-gun, in which he's not. Y'all stay with me. End time watchman will be right back.